Hello everybody. In this video we're going to talk about sequence formulas. So let's first talk about what a sequence is. A sequence is a list of numbers or we could say terms and it could be something like start with a 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, etc. Now notice there is a rule in this sequence and the rule was every term is 2 plus the previous term. Now, we can generate these terms or numbers in a sequence using formulas. And there are two types of formulas for getting the specific numbers in a sequence. The two types of formulas are called direct formulas or recursive formulas. Two kinds of formulas. Now you might see different letters to represent terms. I'm going to use T. So T1 is the first term. So in that last example, the first term was 3. Notice we have a number down here and another number up here. You could kind of think of this as like an input and this is an output. So a direct formula is kind of like an input and an output. Let's look at an example. Say I could tell you that any given term, so t sub n, that means n can be any number, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. It does have to be an integer will equal 4 times its term number minus 7. So let's say I wanted to know the first term. Then that would be t sub 1. I would put in a 1 for n. And that would be 4 minus 7 or negative 3. So that was just a coincidence that the first term in my new sequence formula gave me the opposite of that. Let's look for the eighth term in this sequence. So that would be t sub 8, and I put an 8 in for n. 32 minus 7, or 25. So the eighth term is 25. Now notice that we can generate any term in the sequence with just this formula right here. That's all the information we need. Recursive formulas are a little different. A recursive formula requires the term before it as its input. Not the term number, but the term before it. So, for instance, say we wanted every term to be 2 times the previous term minus 4. We would write that this way. We'd say the term we're interested in is 2 times the previous term. Now, how would I write the previous term? Well, that's the term n minus 1. That's the term before the n term. And then I said minus 4. So, for instance, say that was the formula, and I asked for the second term. Well... I'd need to know the first term, right? Because I'm interested in t sub 2. So this would be t sub 2 minus 1 or t sub 1. To get the second term that I'm interested in, I need the first term. But notice this does not tell us the first term. So with recursive formulas, we need to know one of the terms at least. The first term is kind of nice, but we could actually just know any term. So in this problem, let's say we knew that the second term, t sub 2, was 13. And let's say I asked you for the sixth term, otherwise known as t sub 6. Now, I can't just stick 
the number six into the formula like I could with the direct formula for a sequence. I have to walk my way up from the second term up to the sixth term by using this formula several times in a row. Let's see how that works. Remember, we're always finding the term after the one we know. So we start knowing that T2 is 13. Let's put that in here. And then I'm going to start up here. That means this term that we're going to be able to find is the next term, T3. So T3 is 2 times T2, which was 13, minus 4. So once again, just to remind you, that was T2, the term before. All right, now we do a little math, and we've got 26 minus 4, or 22. All right, now our formula allows us to get T4 by going back and putting T3, the term before it. So now it's 2 times T3 minus 4, which is 44 minus 4 which is 40. Now we put that in the formula to get the next term, T5. T5 is 2 times the term before it, or T4, minus 4. 2 times 40 is 80 minus 4 is 76. We're almost there. Now we can say T6 is 2 times 76 minus 4. 2 times 76 is 152 minus 4, and that's equal to 148. So a sequence is a list of numbers or terms. There are formulas for finding those terms or numbers. A direct formula allows us to substitute the term number in. A recursive formula requires us to substitute the term before any given term in. And the recursive formula also requires that we are given one of the terms also. Okay, I hope that was helpful, and I'll see you in the next video.